Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're going to be comparing the new manual Supra to the Shelby GT350, aka the greatest manual sports car ever produced. I know, it's, it's a big thing to say, but seriously, if you haven't driven one, you just won't understand. Anyways, before we get in this video, though, as always, if you're going to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car brand guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. Powering the GT350 is a flat plane crank, naturally aspirated 5.2 liter V8 that goes through a six speed manual transmission. Power outputs are 526 horsepower and then 429 pound feet of torque, and this thing revs to over 8,000 RPMs. Now, powering the Supra is a turbocharged 3 liter inline six, the B58 from BMW that goes through a six speed manual transmission. Power outputs are 382 horsepower and then 368 pound feet of torque. Now, before we move forward with this comparison, I do want to mention, if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on the exteriors of both of these cars because these cars are both about fun driving, and so most of the video is going to be dedicated to driving. But what I do want to say, seeing them both next to each other, and this is not because I'm just partial to the Mustang because it's my Mustang. I do think both of them look fantastic, but I feel like the Mustang has a little bit more presence and i think the design in the mustang is going to age a little bit better however i do think the design in the supra is also going to age fantastically but let me know which one you like the look of more now something that is important for performance driving is the tire and wheel setup so with the mustang it's 295 35 at 19 in the front and then 305 35 19 in the rear so we've got some pretty big tires here Whereas the Supra setup is 255, 35, 19 in the front and then 275, 35, 19 in the rear. So still a really good sports car setup, but the tires aren't nearly as wide. And then here's the rear ends of both of the cars. And obviously we'll have an exhaust clip in a little bit so you guys can hear the exhaust difference between both of them. And then inside the Mustang, you actually have soft touch in a lot of places. There's also Alcantara throughout, including on these Recaro racing seats which are really cool alcantara even on the steering wheel you got the tremec six speed manual which is fantastic and then look you got like soft touch on the dash but my favorite part personally is the gauge cluster that goes to again over 8,000. the rpms against the speed again analog not as cool looking as what you have in the supra but still i think it's cool now the Supra also has a bunch of soft touch just like the Mustang, um, but it focuses a little bit more on luxury. You've got these leather seats, for example. You've got leather on the steering wheel. And then you guys can, well actually you can't see, I guess I'll have to pop and turn it on here. I was gonna say you can see the cool gauge cluster. There you go. Now you can see the cool gauge cluster. That's definitely fun. Again, you got a shifter for the manual transmission. But yeah, I'd say, you know, not as exciting from the colors because this one's all blacked out in the interior, but still a nice interior. Now the GT350 originally stickered for about $62,000 and this car weighs just under 4,000 pounds. Whereas the Supra originally stickers for just under $60,000 and this car weighs a little bit under 3,500 pounds. Okay, we are starting off in the Supra, and as always on this road, going in, we're gonna go a little bit slower than uh, going out, just so that I can, you know, kind of scan the road, see if there's anything obstructing or anything like that. Again, <laughs> it's not exactly the most cared for road on the planet, but it's really fun to drive down because it's got, you know, a bit of elevation change and super bumpy, so it really tests the suspension of a sports car. And the Supra so far is handling it quite well. I will say we've got tons of torque from that B58, does really well at higher elevation here. I mean, I barely have to get into it to keep myself running along. And the Supra really does feel at home here. It, the lightweight, nimble feel, I think does really well. And the suspension, I mean, this is beautiful. This is like textbook sports car when it comes to the performance and the handling. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, that transition there, the back end will always kind of pop up because of the bump. And I mean, this, it just, man, it holds its own. This is extremely impressive. And the damping is fantastic. The 
the car's not coming. This is crazy because like the Supra on, you know, flat pavement, when you're just like pushing it super hard, this thing will just, it wants to get out away from you. But like on roads like this, it, yeah, it's, it does surprisingly well. Okay, we're gonna get kind of from a standstill. <laughs> oh man, it's so much power, so much power. Now the gearing is kind of long on this manual. So, you know, some of you might say it as a bad thing. I see it as kind of good on these roads because then I can focus more on the steering and everything rather than focusing on shifting gears as much, at least on a tight road like this, right? But you still get to play with the transmission a little bit. Oh my gosh, yeah, the, the handling is just so good. This might be my new favorite car on this uh, road. I have not taken the GT350 down the road yet, so maybe I'll change my mind after we do that. Oh, there's, there's another bump transition. Again, just like how it can handle the weight transfer that you have to have through this, the up and down. I mean, the, the seriously, the engineers at Toyota and BMW, <laughs> they made the best BMW ever created on the planet. It just happens to have a Toyota badge on it. Oh, and I love the popples out of the back. So to quickly cap things off with the Supra before we pop into that GT350 or my GT350 rather, damping's amazing, power's amazing, it handling's amazing, everything is amazing about this car. The only downside with the manual Supra, my personal opinion, the transmission doesn't feel that great. It's a BMW transmission, Toyota has tuned it. It's better than what is in BMWs, but it's still, yeah. Honestly, this feels like a Mini Cooper with an inline six. That's the best way to look at the GR Supra I, with the manual. I know that sounds crazy, but with how the transmission feels, with the auto rev match, how it performs and everything, it's literally a Mini Cooper with an inline six. It just happens to be rear wheel drive instead of front wheel drive. I don't think it's a bad thing because Mini Coopers are super fun to drive. Let's pop in the GT350. Starting off in the GT350. <laughs> and actually, we can probably do this all in second gear because we have so many revs that like, I mean, yeah. It's, it, this car, this car is crazy when it comes to uh, revs. Now, right off the bat, getting into this from the Supra, you do notice the weight difference, 100%. This does feel like a bigger, heavier car because it is. Now, another key difference is the transmission. Like I said, the super transmission, I'm not, I'm not so sure I like how it feels when you go into the gates. This, it's a Tremec six speed. And let me tell you, I feel like Tremec really does make the best manuals because it's just so notchy into all of the gates. It just, it feels absolutely perfect every single time you shift gears. And so I am a huge fan of the transmission. Now the steering on the Supra, it felt like it was a little bit more direct, but I think a big part of the weird steering feel with this is because of how big the front tires are 295 millimeters in width and so that just means that we're grabbing a lot more on the road and so i think it kind of it makes the steering feel a little bit a little bit different on this um and then also the steering wheel size this steering wheel is bigger so that kind of also kind of uh, gives it a little bit of a different feel now i think we can all agree that the v8 in this definitely sounds better than that inline six don't get me wrong inline sixes are sweet they sound absolutely fantastic but you can't beat a V8. Uh, I will say I do prefer these seats. They're more comfortable, believe it or not, even though they were cars. Not only are they more comfortable, but they obviously hold you in place better with how big these bolsters are. So I think that that's another big plus with the GT350. Okay, so we're gonna kind of get a little bit of an acceleration here in the GT350. <laughs> so the gearing is longer in the GT350, which I do think is a little bit of a downside for a road like, well, it's an upside and a downside. Obviously you don't have to shift gears, but that first gear is so, so long, like 55 miles an hour. Now going a little bit quicker, I will say the damping in the Supra was a little bit better. This is still really good. The car stays nice and planted, but I do think the Supra 
again, it could be the shorter wheelbase, you know, narrower size that makes it so that it's not going over as much as what this car is going over, but it seemed like it was a little bit better. <laughs> but man, that V8, you just, it never gets old. It's just so much, you always have power and it just keeps going. It really does. So to sum things up here in a second, <laughs> to sum things up here with this comparison, GT350 versus manual Supra. Um, you know, exterior styling again, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I think that this, I think this Mustang's gonna age better stylistically um, yeah, compared to the Supra, like 20, 30 years, I don't know, that's just my opinion. I think both of them look great. I like this interior more, even though some of the stuff in here is like, meh, it's, um, it's bigger, it's more open, so it's just a more usable interior. In the Supra, I feel kind of cramped a little bit. Uh, potholes are horrible here, by the way. Um, now, aside from that, when it comes to driving, again, you do feel the weight in the Mustang. The Supra, I think the suspension on that's a little bit better. And I had this in the comfort setting, too. Um, transmission's better than this, engine's better. That's a tough one, honestly. Here's the deal, in 20 years, I think that we're gonna remember this. We're gonna remember the Super 2, but like this is the one that people are gonna go after. But in 20 years, people are gonna be like, oh, it's probably the, you know, again, the Super's like the best BMW ever made. I think that's still gonna be the opinion then. Um, but yeah, when it comes to driving dynamics, on a bigger road, I would definitely give this the win, but because that road's tight, the Supra definitely, it, it handled it better. So it just depends on the road that you're on. Let me know your thoughts though. Let me know your pick, Supra or GT350.